Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how we can take scriptable objects and use them to populate a shop's inventory and show that to the player inside of the UI. Now, I had already recorded this video, the recording didn't come out quite so well, um, so the scripts are already written, but I'm going to go ahead and talk through them as best as I can. Sorry about that for losing the original footage. Um, so, to get started here, we have this chest object. Ignore the fact that it's a chest, but what it has attached to it is the shop event script. So the shop event script has reference to a scriptable object called the shop, which basically contains, if we double click on it, a list of the shop inventory. So all the items that should exist inside of it and the starting amount for those shop items. Uh, it also contains a shop slot because we're going to copy this data over to the shop UI as we create it. And the shop slot is going to be the game object where we actually create that object on screen. So that's going to take the game item data, the icon, the value, and the display name, and show that to the player as a shop slot. Uh, could be a better name, but you'll see what I mean when we actually go ahead and hit play. So the shop event script is simply going to pop open the shop UI, instantiate this. Let's actually just take a look at the script here. So shop U, uh, sorry, shop event here. Uh, if a shop UI prefab has not been created or hasn't been opened, it's going to instantiate one of those on the canvas. It's going to get reference to the shop UI component. That's a script that's actually attached to the game object. And it's going to open the shop from that script, copying over the data from the shop scriptable object to the shop itself. Um, so let's go ahead and show that happening on screen. And there'll be more magic that you'll see immediately that we'll have to talk about. So hitting play here, uh, do, 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 whenever it decides to load. Okay, there we go. So on the canvas, the shop UI has been created. And this shop UI has a grid layout where the shop slots have been created onto. So you can see here, it takes the shop data, it copies it in here, and then the shop slots are used inside of the shop UI script. Um, and the shop slots, of course, you can click on the buy button. They currently do nothing, which is going to hopefully be our next video, actually selling the item to the player directly. But you can see that it has the price set, it has the title set, and it has the icon, the image set. Uh, this is actually a sprite being set onto an image. So the shop UI script over here, um, it gets a few values from the inspector, which is the shop passed in through the shop event. Um, the advantage of doing this is we only need to create the shop UI prefab once, but we can copy any shop scriptable object into those instances of the shop UI that we want. So basically one shop UI can display any shop we have in the game, which is really handy. And then it has the, um, the panel over here, the grid layout group, uh, basically the spot where we wanna put all of these shop slots onto, and then the shop slot prefab or shop item prefab, which is what keeps getting cloned here to display our data. So let's go take a look at that script in a bit more detail. So, so the shop UI script, um, as I mentioned before, has those stuff in there. Uh, also has the shop inventory as a private list over here. So rather than modifying the uh, shop scriptable object, which honestly, it should probably be renamed a bit like shop uh, template. Let's do that now, actually. I'll forget about it otherwise. So let's rename this to shop template so that it can be referenced everywhere more properly. Uh, because we're copying this data, we're not trying to edit it. So let's see, an open shop, which is being called from shop event. The shop inventory is being copied over from the shop template. We'll also rename that here, shop template. It's being copied over to, into the shop inventory. And as you know from earlier, the shop items, which there's a list of, the shop inventory, contains a shop slot. Uh, the reason for that is we want to associate the game object with the game item itself. So when we display a game object on screen that maybe has the image uh, from that game item data, we also have a link, we have a link between the data and what's shown to the player 
which makes it easier to edit later on if we ever need to do anything like subtract one item from the inventory, which we'll probably do in the next video. Um, but then besides that, we have this populate shop items function uh, method, which is really important. So what it will do is when the shop opens, for every item that exists inside of the shop inventory, which we're taking from the shop template, uh, basically every item we want to have in the shop, we create a new game object here, instantiate, and we instantiate that on top of the shop layout. The shop layout is a grid layout group, so it takes care of organizing its display on screen. Uh, grid layout automatically does that. And after we've created the prefab, it should have a shop slot attached to it. This is a, another simple script, which contains references to the title, price text, and the purchase button. Um, and we take the data from the copied over uh, shop items and we update the shop slots with that same stuff. So whatever the display name is for the item that we've set in the scriptable object, we put that on the title here, the text of the title. Um, same for the text of the price, we update the value from the scriptable object. Um, we also take the icon from the scriptable object and use that to show for the button's image display. And lastly, we take this object we've created and we associate that inside of the shop inventory. So that's where this shop slot comes into play, um, which will allow us to link all this data together later on and make it easier to edit. So the last thing we need to talk about here is the shop slot, which simply contains references to the title price texts and the purchase button. And that is manually set in the editor for the prefab. So I can show that as well here. Uh, we have the shop slot. So the shop slot, as you can see, is a game object prefab, which has the script where we set the references. And then we have the name text, the purchase item button and the price text. So the reason for the script is just making sure that everything is linked up properly and we can reference those fields in the shop UI script to properly update them. So one thing I wanna point out is that if you ever change the class name of a scriptable object, you also need to change the script name of the scriptable object class. So you see here, it's now shop template.csharp. The script name has to match up with the shop template um, or else your asset files are going to kind of be a little bit screwy and lose the references, but your asset files are still there. So once you update the c -sharp file name, the data will still be there. Don't worry too much about that. Just know that you need to change both whenever you change one. Um, so now we can go ahead and take the shop, uh, which we'll call shop template now, and we'll link it back up to the shop UI prefab. So shop UI, as a prefab is gonna take reference to the shop template. And now if we go ahead and hit the play button, it should work as it was doing before. And it is. So in the next video, we're going to be updating these scripts with the ability to have a player inventory and to copy one of these items into the player's inventory so that they can use it as they adventure throughout your games, whether that's a healing potion, a fireball, or a servant that they can spawn in the game and use to help them out with their quest so that's going to be it for this video i hope you guys are learning a bit about scriptable objects and i will see you guys in my next unity video